want you to be enriched and empowered and understand how much God loves you and how much we appreciate you. Amen. As you travel, as you make your way, uh, please just make new Calvary your home or away from home whenever you're in the area and if ever you're looking uh, for a church home.
seeing what God is doing. We are asking all of our members of New Calvary Baptist Church to make that offering uh, of 10% uh, on our first Sunday, not just our first Sunday, but the first part of our quarter, uh, so that we might continue to be faithful and see what God is up to and what God is doing. So please just remember uh, that on this week as we come forward to our first Sunday of our new quarter uh, in the month of October. Our book named is Ministry is going to be rescheduled at birthday luncheon for October the 10th. All of the Gold Lane ministry will be October the 10th at 1 p.m. Please mark your calendars accordingly. Uh, we will have a full uh, month in the month of October. Uh, we have had rescheduled, uh, as you already know, uh, because of Hurricane Florence. We rescheduled our leadership um, conference. Our leadership workshop will be October the 12th and October the 13th. Uh, October the 12th and October the 13th is where Matthew Trufant will be our facilitator. All leaders are expected to be in attendance. All those who have a desire to just grow and learn in terms of uh, how we work together in New Calvary Baptist Church or what we need to be doing the work together in New Calvary Baptist Church are indeed uh, extended uh, the time to come on out. All members are invited to attend. And then on the 14th, uh, Reverend Dr. My Good Friend, Reverend Dr. Eugene Lionel Gibson. Can you don't tell him I told you? That Eugene L. Gibson will be uh, our guest facilitator on that Sunday as uh, we worship together uh, and give God glory. So please, if you can, uh, make your way out and share with us uh, on the, the, the 12th, 13th, and 14th. Uh, also, we're looking forward to uh, celebrating with those who have been across the health ministry, making their way to Mount Trashmore on the 13th. That's a Saturday. Uh, you're asked to wear pink and Donations are accepted for those who are looking to um, make their uh, walk and strides against breast cancer again. That will be over at Mount Trashmore and Virginia Beach. So please, uh, uh, October, you can uh, make your donations and contributions. Uh, you can still, you still have time uh, to go to the health ministry room uh, and sign up and engage. All those who are looking and continuing to share. And I am New Calvary T-shirt movement uh, to support the choir ministry in regards to their robes. You can still see Brother Jamal Walker and Sister Hines Cox. They have all the information and sizes uh, for you to do that. Uh, big we, guys, we have been blessed this morning by our music ministry. We want to celebrate their amen as we look to celebrate their music ministry anniversary, October the 21st. Amen. At the 11 a.m. worship service. Uh, so we look forward to celebrating them. We can celebrate. We have one of the baddest music ministries in the world. We have a studio. We have a great time. We will them through them under the leadership of Elder Moody. And so we are just more want to recognize them and celebrate them in that worship experience. So please make sure you come on out and share with them uh, and offer uh, your participation in worship. Our family and friends day is quickly approaching on October 26th, 27th, and 28th. That weekend, we will be celebrating our family and friends. We're looking for all of us uh, to bring folks and to invite folks and to come on out and to share uh, in our family and friends for the weekend. Uh, with our family and friends assessment is $50 as it usually is. So please just be mindful of our assessment as we look forward to going forward uh, in sharing that on uh, Wednesday, October 3rd. There will be a meeting for the committee in the eyes of Rock and Roll. And so please uh, make your way if you are a member of that committee. Uh, Thanksgiving baskets will be so making their um, requests and petitions. I'm sure Reverend Mack will soon um, be asking for the microphone as we get ready for this Thanksgiving season. His hand is already over there waving. Uh, amen. So he will be asking soon. I so just want to get your mind right. Amen. For contributions so we might have uh, all of the resources that we need to continue uh, to be a blessing to our community uh, as the details will be upcoming very, very soon. Uh, if you are interested, immediately after service, uh, Sister Ida Smith, member of New Calvary Baptist Church, has set up a table uh, for information in regards to mental health and substance abuse. She has several different uh, uh, pieces of information you can take away with you. She's got stuff that you can uh, get questions that you can ask, information she has. She works uh, for uh, intensive community.
community outreach services. Uh, she is interested uh, in helping and being that blessing to the Calvary. So if you know people who need information or gospel mental uh, health and wellness, you know folks who uh, need information or gospel substance abuse, please don't hesitate to make your way. She will be in the SAW room immediately after the 11 a.m. service, uh, and you can get all uh, the information and help uh, that she can make available to you. Uh, we are going to just continue to move forward uh, in this worship experience. Uh, we are going to look forward uh, to what God has in store. Uh, there you go, this is my boy, Carlos Adams. If any of you uh, have uh, been able to, uh, Brother Adams is trying to look a little confused right now. Um, but if you can, go ahead and get his autograph. Last night, he was in a production, a play production. What was it called? Called Girl? What was it Girl? What? Girls World, Girls World was a play production. Uh, it was over there at the Rover. Uh, he had a couple of different roles. Uh, he played a, a guy uh, who was kind of crazy. Uh, that didn't seem much of a stretch. Uh, but he also played, he also played uh, another fellow by the name who was a teacher uh, for the young lady. And he did a wonderful job. Uh, he's a wonderful actor. He, he, he played his And so uh, we're grateful for that. We're going to continue moving forward in this worship experience. How many of you can declare God's goodness in your life and all that God has done? God please do. You can continue to worship God when He is given time. Good measure, press down, shake together, running over. Shall be born into your lap for the measure you give will be the measure you give back. Several ways to give at New Calvary. You can give through the envelope in the back of your pew. You can get on your smartphone and give through Givelify. Make New Calvary your favorite place to give and make your donation. You can make your way to the SAW room and give electronically through your debt or credit card. But however you give, we understand that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. So I want to see a tea right now. Amen. Let me see a tea in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we're coming this time. We can call Scott Smith. He's going to come at this time and lead us to the throne of grace. So let us prepare uh, as she comes. Why don't you stay right there? Hold me in there. Hold me in there. Amen. Let us receive her as she comes.
Because the more he gives to us, the more we give, the more he gives to us. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. And I said, because I've seen it in my own life. As my grandmother taught me, when you close your hand, nothing can come in, nothing can go out. So I did. And yes, I will give my last because I know I've got my grandmother. He has provided for me. So have a please accept this. My conversation with you, with my church family around, to listen to our conversation. Please hear this. I'll pray.
about women's bodies. As Bill Cosby was sentenced and went to jail, Lord, this was a rough week. This was a rough week for not only us as individuals, but us as a nation.
experience the glory of the Lord. Yeah. And we will give you all the praise and honor that you so rightfully deserve. Right now. Even before we say the Lord, we give you the praise. We praise on what we will see. We are praising you, oh God, right now for what it will be. Because we know what's coming. We know that the prayers of the righteous avail of much. And we know we've been praying hard. And for many days we've been praying long. So Lord, we thank you in advance for what we will experience in this place, in this time in our lives.
and people wondering if he would ever return to competition level and play again. Tiger has some setbacks, but as he walked up the 18 hole at the East Lake uh, Golf Club on Sunday, people could not stop talking about his comeback. In fact, some of the people who criticized him when he was down were celebrating him in victory. Some of the same people who were following him and shouting his name and patting him on the back on Sunday were incredibly critical of him years ago when he was going through. Some things Tiger had brought on himself and some things were just life happening to him. But because he did not give up, he was able to create the makings of a great comeback. Have you ever been in a situation where it seemed like everything was stacked against you? Have you ever had a situation in your life where you feel like you were in a moment of a setback? Does anybody in here ever going too fast? Do you know what a setback even is? Can anybody in here identify and say there have been some moments in my life where I have experienced some setbacks? Things seem to be going well. And just in a short time, you find yourself in a setback kind of a situation. Setbacks are frustrating. Setbacks are confusing because you can be riding high one moment. And then it seems that all of a sudden, you're low the next. Setbacks are frustrating because they seem like they happen so fast that as fast as they happen, it seems like they take a long time to come out of them. Setbacks are, can be caused by us or by other people, but the reality is setbacks happen to all of us. The people will have something to say about where you are and what you are doing. Folks will always have an opinion about what you should have done or, or why you're where you are and whether or not you deserve to be there. But the good news is, despite our setbacks, we can all experience a comeback. And that you see, for those of us who are believers in the faith, those of us who have a relationship with the Lord, no matter where we are, the good news is, is that you are always in position for a comeback. Yeah, that's right. That's good news today. That those of us who believe, we can find ourselves in some comeback situations as long, that's right, you guessed it, we're willing to worship. Uh, we've been saying it for the past few weeks. Worship is the vehicle to help us have a comeback situation. Worship gives us a mindset to understand that it's possible for us to recover. Worship is the, is the atmosphere that we find ourselves in um, that is outside the voice of confusion and inside the voice of direction so that we can do what we need to do to come out of our setbacks. Uh, the thing about entering into worship space with God is that we're able to connect to the power that's able to reveal to us that we can recover from whatever situation we find ourselves in. That life can and will sometimes, my brothers and sisters, mess us up. And life can sometimes cause us to wonder if the way that we're headed is the right direction in the first place. But it's when we enter into a worship setting that we can begin to lay the foundation of realizing that God has created us to succeed and not to fail. That God has created us to be the head and not the tail. That God has created us to be overcomers and not be defeated by our situations. We begin to lay the foundation in worship of making a significant comeback. Now, journey with me as we understand in this text that recognizes it's important for us to get to worship for our comeback because worship gives us the proper encouragement. David has been trying with his army. He's been all lean. He's been all low. He's been outsourced uh, and working uh, for some folk uh, in the Philistine relationship. And he's back to the area of Ziklag where they have set up camp. You see, David has been away. And while he's been away, while he's been working, he's been partnering up with some other nations to defeat some other enemies. The Amalekites have come by and raided his camp and burned it to the ground. I see David's there and their families are there. And so naturally, when they arrive, they see the flames of the camp and they panic because they think that their children and wives have been destroyed. But when they get there and they see no 
your bodies, they can only conclude that everything, all of their property has been taken, including their wives and children. Now, David was doing some contract work for the Philistines, and he was sent home because they no longer trusted him. He was partnering with an enemy to work against another enemy, but once that enemy was defeated, the Philistines turned their back on him and said he can no longer be trusted, and so David is headed back to his camp with his men, and when he returns, he sees that everything that he owns and he's been connected to has been taken away. David's life and the life of his men have forever been altered. David's life, because of the events that have taken place, will never be the same. And the shift in his life is so devastating that it causes him and his men to weep. The thing is, is that he says, everything I possess has been taken away. The family I love has been taken from me. And the place where I live has been burned to the ground. Their lives have been devastated. And it doesn't matter, watch this, it doesn't matter how successful David has been. It doesn't matter how many victories David has had before. It doesn't matter how good his relationship with God has been up to this moment. Right now, David is experiencing a setback. It's a funny thing about setback. You know, setbacks don't care what you used to be. Setbacks don't care what happened before. Setbacks don't care how good you used to have it. Setbacks don't care how many people called your name or patted you on the back or how many fans or how many likes you got on social media. Setbacks don't matter how many things you used to have going for you. Doesn't matter what it used to look like in your situation, how much money you got in the bank, how much good fortune you got going on in your life. A setback knows how to show up and mess up your life right now. David had people sing it. They were singing, Saul might have slain his thousands. But David, oh David, David had slain his ten thousands. People patting him on the back. Uh, people got like, he got five thousand plus friends on Facebook. David got a reputation. They talking about how they feared him on the battlefield. But right now, sitting in a smoldering base camp with his wives and everything he owned, taken from him, can throw you a setback. David's life has been changed. That's what setbacks do. They alter your life. They change the course of direction. Setbacks throw things in our lives that we simply weren't expecting. You were taking care of your business and doing what you had to do, but the doctor said they found a mass in your breast. You were accepted into school, but they told you they can't give you the loan that you were expecting. You finished your training, but you can't find a job in the field that you're trained for. You're working hard in your relationship, but it doesn't matter how hard you work, you just can't keep together. You play fair, you work hard, you treat people right in your job, but they still Thank you. 
Israel but to put their pain on you. Oh, come on, help me, Holy Ghost. Some people don't know how to channel their own hurt and their own disappointment, and so they're going to make it somebody else's problem. Oh, that's why you shouldn't trip when people try to make you their problem, because it might be that they're hurting themselves, and they don't know how to deal with it. That's why you shouldn't get too messed up when other folks try to come to you with some stuff that's their issue, because the reality is they got so much pain going on in their own situation, they
creates the opportunity for encouragement. When David enters into worship, trust this, uh, this is worship that is not corporate. It's not corporate worship. This is worship that's based on circumstance. <laughs> this ain't corporate. This is worship. This is not one one worship. This is worship that ain't based on who showed up. This is worship based upon what my emergency is. This is worship based upon So David asks for the ephod as a tool for worship. 
Some of y'all missed it. Everybody is mad with David. Everybody mad with David. And watch this. The women and children are gone. And the men who are there are mad with David. He doesn't have any worshipers with him. <laughs> Except for the priest. Except for Abba. So, but he says, give me the ephah to set the atmosphere for worship. <laughs> Can I help you? Sometimes you need to create your own atmosphere for worship. Sometimes you got to create your own atmosphere, not because other folk can't do it, but because in the middle of your setback, you don't have time to wait for other people. You don't know only you know what you need and what God needs to do. Bring me the ephod. It's time for us. And I declare, the reality is we all need our own ephods. We all need our own ephods. It ain't about I'm going to wait until I get to the sanctuary. Yeah, that's cool. But sometimes you got to worship all by yourself. You shouldn't have to wait until the corporate setting of worship. You need to have your own ephod. You need to have your own song. Even if it ain't, oh, how I love Jesus. You need to have your own scripture that you can go to. That I never seen the righteous forsaken. Because we can think that because we're in worship, our desires 
that there are lying are coming from God. But we have to understand that's a thought or an idea. We still have a responsibility to discern and ask the Lord which direction we need to take. There's still some discernment in our design. That's how we come to recognize God's direction. But there's discernment to reveal what God needs us to do. They can ask God, he asks to watch this. He said, should I pursue the people who took my family? Uh, this is the will, is this the will and the desire of you? But David says, I need to know if God is in it. I don't want to get my wives back. I want to get my possessions back. But God, is this the moment that I'm supposed to do that? Or God, is you, do you have something else for me to do? So many times we go after stuff because we believe it's the right thing. But never We didn't ask God if God was in it. We didn't ask God to lead it. We never asked God for the strength to go through it and to endure it. David asked the Lord, should I go? Will I be successful? And the Lord tells David, he says, you will certainly overtake him and you're going to succeed in your rescue. See, worship helps us get clarity in what we're doing. So we need to get the order to take some steps that the Lord is instructing us to take. Worship is not just about celebration, but it's also about confirmation. We don't come just to celebrate and just to thank God for what God has done, but we also come from the confirmation for God to lead us in what we're doing so that we can go forth and be fruitful with what God gave us instruction to do. Okay. This um, Wednesday, talk about this Wednesday. Here it is. Wednesday, we talk about um, the five key components of worship. Awesome. Right? We said the five key components. Hear me. These are the five key components of worship. Everything else is window dressing. These, this is what you need. This is essential for worship. Everything else is what you want, not what you need. Five key components of worship. We said was singing and song. Right? It was giving. It was communion, it was preaching the proclamation, and prayer. Those are the five key components of worship. Everything else is just about what it is you want, how you write it, your style, your culture, um, and your context. That's everything else. Prayer is the place where we not only speak to God, but when we also hear from God what it is we need. Worship is the place where we get the kind of instruction that is shared, not only the, the should I of our lives. God, should I go? Should I do it? Should I say it? Should I operate this way? But it's not only the should I's, but also this is the place where the how should I show up? God, how should I show up? God, how should I do this? So I don't need things in my hands, but I stay faithful to the direction and the insight that God has given me. We need to have prayers that say, Lord, how should I approach talking to this difficult person? Lord, show me how to deal with this sticky situation. God, how should I approach asking for forgiveness? Lord, show me how to forgive. What is the right way, God, to help somebody? Lord, show me how I need to work with others. We need the Lord to give us instruction on how to approach some things in our lives. Because watch what happens in the text. He, he says, when he started out, on his journey, he had 600 men with him. He had 600 men with him. Look at the text. I said, read when you know. Chapter 30, verse 7. When he gets on his journey, he got 600 men with him. And then the text says that they went through a mountainous area called the Beesaw Ravine. It's mountainous. You have to climb mountains. You have to navigate. You know, you have to get through uh, some really rough terrain. And when they got through the Beesaw Ravine, 200 of the men were too tired to keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, yeah. throw that around. 600 men started when they went through the difficult mountain region. 200 said, Y'all go ahead and keep it. Hold up, hold up, hold up. They got wives and children. Help. Who were captured. Yeah. And they wanted to stone David, but they can't convince. 
Unity. They got something that they lost themselves. But they can't find the strength to pursue it. Can I help some of y'all? That's why you don't get bit out of shape for those people who got issues with you. Because everybody ain't going where you go. Everybody can't go where you go. And you know what I said at 8 o'clock, I'm going to tell you right here. Do you know how fabulous you really are? Do you know how fearfully and wonderfully made you are truly created? Do you know how much power is really in you? Do you really know how fabulous and magnificent you really are and what God has put inside of you? And watch this, everybody can't keep up with you. Show you where they are, 
and we're in heaven. Oh, I hear my grandmother preaching right there. You better be careful how you treat people because it'll come back home again. Or you better be careful how you dismiss people because you never know when you're going to see them again. Or you better be careful how you treat people when you come up because you never know who you're going to see. Another thing is, it is always going to make sure that you can be a blessing to people because you never know how the blessing you gave is going to come back to you. They fed the man that the Amalekites left him in. And he told them, for saving his life, he would show where the enemy was. You always want to be open to be a blessing to somebody. Because you never know what God has for you through what it is you do. The Bible says, watch this, the Bible says that when the servant took them to where they were, he took them to where the Amalekites were. The Amalekites were sitting on the hills, they laid them back, they drank them, uh, they celebrated, they high five each other, and they talked about how they got over. They said David wasn't expecting us, and we got it all from them. We took all their property, took their wives, took their children, we got it all. They celebrated the victory of the spoils. They right there and never noticed that David had come back over. Can I just minister to some of y'all right now? I tell you that's why your enemies can't win because they underestimated you. They thought that your setback was your last event. They thought your slip up was the last day in your life. They thought the mistake you made was the last curtain call. They thought you just happened, what happened to you was the final chapter. But they didn't know that you was coming to worship. They didn't know that you was showing up talking to the Lord. They didn't know you was laying it before God. They didn't know that you were getting yourself ready to make a comeback. Oh, 
Uh, we need to recover so that we can get back, so we can go to the new place that God has for us. I don't know what the way is, but it's time to right where we are. Because look what David does. I'm in the text. I'm in the text. He says, I had to recover. They recovered everything, but they can't stay in the same place. They recovered everything that was taken, but they can't go back to where they were. They got to create a new sense of being. And if we don't be the people of God that God has told us to be, we have to create a new sense of being. But what we have and what we have, we got to recover it. Yes, but we got to take it to the new place. It is, the, it is the ultimate definition of what it means to have wine with the wine skin. Yeah. Because look at what David does. I'm in the text, we're still moving. To verse 22. But evil men and troublemakers. That's why I said read it to y'all. I ain't making it up. Evil men and troublemakers among David's followers. These are enemies. Evil men and troublemakers. Among David's followers said, because the 200 didn't go out of us, they will not share with the plunder we discovered. They can't take, they can take their wives and their kids. But the gold, the jewelry, the possessions, the herds, the cattle, we won't split that with the 400 that came and finished the journey. Now this group thinks that if they didn't work on it, then they can't get any of the plunder. They're working off of merit. Right? Because merit said, like my man smoking, you didn't put in on this man. <laughs> and if you didn't put in on it, you can't get anything but there are two problems with that. One, all that they had wasn't theirs to begin with. The 200 men who couldn't make it had their stuff taken too. So they're trying to actually take the stuff, uh, not, not just the stuff that they lost, but they're actually trying to take the stuff off to the 200, making it about merit. But it's really not about merit, it's about the 400 trying to get more than what they lost. Some people in the fellowship try to win a game to exploit the others and show That wouldn't happen to believers, right? I mean, it wouldn't happen to us, right? When folks were trying to take advantage of one another. That wouldn't happen to us. But then it says, says to them, he says, you can't take credit for something you didn't do. He said, David said, if you really want to talk about merit, the reality is that God is the one who said we would be victorious. God is the one who fought this battle. So if you really want to talk about merit, this is a victory for God. And God made it happen. So if that's the case, if you talk about merit, we got to turn it all over to God. Because God is the one who gave us the victory in the first place. Because it was the Lord's victory, it was the Lord who broke the sign. So here's what we're going to do. When everybody, because all of us have gotten the victory from God, everybody going to get what they lost right back to them. If the Lord, don't miss it, if the Lord has given the victory, then the people will celebrate the victory together. Yes. That's what it is. Some of y'all just missed a good shout. If the Lord has given the victory, then all of God's people celebrate the victory together. To understand what God has done is to celebrate what worship truly is. It's the coming together of God's people to share in the victory. No matter what the setback, no matter where we're going through, no matter what we have, no matter what the problem it is, we remember that God gave all of us an opportunity to recover. And we're here today because God makes the victory available to all of us. So we come to worship because God still gives out victories. I wonder is there anybody in here who's coming here celebrating a victory today? Who's celebrating the victory that God is still in the blessing business? God 
Christian, as Christian experience and as Lila Wade also Christian experience. to worship with you and share with you and grow up with you and God. We believe God is up to something here because God just keeps on bringing us special people. Uh, we are excited. We look forward to laboring and working and journeying with you and see, see what is in store. Uh, we will pray for you uh, as you continue to pray for us. The words of the vernacular that means the street will be actually back in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to do one more thing for me. I want you to wave to your new family. They're excited to have you. Amen. I'm going to ask you to follow me. Follow me, Nicole. She got some information she wants to give to you. And we say, welcome home. Welcome to the new calendar. God is Yeah. 